I got me a little rest today and we're gonna try to get a little marathon stream here we got about two hours to the ball drops and a uh, Bateman jr. he'll be on here for a little bit and uh, he's gonna go to bed but uh, we're gonna, I guess we're just gonna talk baits and, and fishing and whatever you guys want to talk about uh, it's an open mic tonight um, so I'll answer questions as many as I can I'm gonna post this over on my Facebook page uh, in just a second here Bateman Jr. has found some old-school swim baits show, show them that bait showed up to the camera we call that uh, that's the California swim babes and it's a chartreuse and blue one yeah they are different sizes this is a, a four inch one and this is one of the original line throughs you see that little hole right there um, that body cavity these are this is the five inch one one I really like but these are definitely a hand pour you see that flat top on these things um, this was a great great swim bait kind of hard to find uh, I'm not even sure if they're made anymore but this was a definitely an original one uh, my buddy over in eastern kentucky chris holsclaw sent these to me so appreciate it chris um i gotta send him some prank baits this week um so you gotta scoot over i can't run my laptop it's all over me but so we got we got bait bait junior here and finesse bait i like it i, I need i need to get some uh YouTube's how to get them to sink well actually these aren't really made to to sink uh, they're pretty much something that's gonna run up in the top two foot of the water column it's a really good search bait up shallow um, now what some guys would do is they would weight the treble hook uh, but this there's a cavity in here I don't know if you can tell that and that weighs about three-eighths of an ounce so it does have a little bit of weight to it to you so heck yeah grab that six inch stuff so man i just got this new hoodie i, I literally opened the package about two hours ago man these things are super super comfortable uh, and they've adjusted the sleeves i don't know if you guys bought these in the past the sleeves are really tight these are really loose uh fits good if i lose a little bit more weight we'll, we'll be rocking I, I was wearing when i first started streaming on youtube i was kind of wearing a 2x and i am down to a large so really changed my diet up and everything so let me get this posted over my facebook page real quick guys it won't start when we did a minute ago what didn't a minute ago like when i was doing this when i was like holding the thing right like hey it. you know what you need to do go turn the tv off in mama's bedroom because it's running the internet okay gotta send Batman jr on a chore real quick so the stream don't drop out Bait Mama is watching some um, streaming Netflix, and then I think he left his YouTube on, so. Got me a really good glass here of uh, New Year's Eve Dr. Pepper. Oh man, that's good. Good stuff. The disconnect was probably on my end, but I think I got that fixed now. Yeah. You got Bait Junior, but where is the Bait Babe at? The wife is she is she is inside. Uh, little Neely is asleep. She's not even gonna make it close to the ball dropping. So, uh, uh I, I, you good? Yeah. You good? You sure? All right. Do, do you have to turn the, the Xbox off too? Or? No, mom's watching on the Xbox. It's okay. So, well, CP, we're just in here. We're going to talk baits tonight, whatever. Uh, we can make fun of YouTubers. Uh, I don't know. It's just, I figured it's New Year's Eve. We might as well stream. Um, man, uh, why, well, I actually, believe it or not, I rarely, rarely drink. Um, and part of that is because of this dude right here and uh just something i, I just kind of quit doing um 
I never was really that big into it. Kind of every now and then socially, but. I, I do like me some Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Brooks has got him an orange crush. Because, uh, number one, uh, I was streaming Saturday night, guys, and Ohio State was winning. And then the Clemson Orange Crush came back. Shout out to the Clemson Tigers uh, playing in the national title game against LSU, which is Brooks' favorite team. Brooks, you like LSU? Yeah? What color are they? Um, I don't remember. Yellow and purple. Yeah, and Tennessee's orange. Tennessee's orange. They're not playing for the national championship, though. Yeah. Because we suck. LSU's good, though. So, go Tigers. You say go Tigers? Go Tigers. There we go. All right. So, what is the best forgotten bait? Man, that's a tough question because uh, there's so many really, really good ones out there. I'll be honest. I, I, I think the Bill Lewis rattle trap is the best forgotten bait. Uh, I mean, sure, they still sell plenty of them, but everyone buys all the red eye shads and, hey, I love the six cents quake and everything. But, man, day in and day out, Billis rattle trap catches fish everywhere in the country, from small fish to big fish. It's just, it is really, honestly, the greatest lipless crankbait bait ever made, and it's so simple. But the old ones with the catfish hooks on it, those suck. You definitely had to change uh, the trebles. You get in some of the East Texas filming? No, I didn't. I was invited KCT fishing to go to East Texas. I could not make it happen. Uh, but uh, me and Ben, we're gonna. We're going to get some stuff going here probably about February. Uh, love to do some bed fishing there. Best favorite jerkbait rod. Man, uh, the one I use really is a custom rod that I use for my square bills. So I'm getting another one made just like it. So I have a jerkbait. It's a seven foot medium moderate action. Um, but I'm going to get this one specific for jerkbait cut down to like six foot eight. Uh, now for stock rod. Uh, there's a lot of good ones out there, but Dobbins Champion, they make like a 683 or something. It's kind of specialized. It's a really good one. Um, there's a, Z a Shimano Zodius, like 68 medium. That's a really good one, too. So, Oh, let's see here. All I know is UK swept you of I this year in basketball and football, so it's been a good season. Well, that's true. They did beat Louisville. Uh, Louisville's, it's just, college basketball is crazy. There's no one dominant team. Uh, I did see the Chrome Bullshad post on Instagram today. It's a very good job. I, I, I like that. Definitely would be killer on Hartwell and those places where those bass really like that Chrome style. Um, dang, I wish I could go to Falcon Lake. Um, uh, Let's see if I missed any. Norman Cranks are forgotten to catch them. Yeah, man, I did a whole lot of talk on the Norman Cranks in that uh, last live stream. Oh, well, here's a good question. What's your top five Carolina rig baits? Uh, number one uh, is a Gary Yamamoto Cinco. Uh, I've caught a lot of fish on a stick bait uh, on a Carolina rig. And if I'm Carolina rigging a stick bait or Cinco, I really like a six inch or bigger. That's what she said, but I like the bigger stick baits, and when you pull it, it'll kind of dart up into the side, and then it kind of shimmies down. Uh, that one's always been really good to me. Uh, any type of French fry bait, like a Lake Fork ring fry or a, a Zoom centipede, those have been really good. And I'll be honest, a uh, six or eight inch lizard is dynamite on a Carolina rig, uh, so that's three. Um, I definitely like Carolina rigging a Zoom Fluke. In the, uh, in the crankbait that has the beam color? Yeah, but that's not even on a Carolina rig. You know Carolina rig crankbaits. Well, you could, but it'd be weird. Um, so, uh, yeah, Zoom Fluke is deadly on a Carolina rig, especially watermelon and green pumpkin ones. Uh, that's kind of something a lot of the pros guys do, and they don't tell you about it. They Carolina rig a Fluke or soft jerk bait quite a bit. And uh, the last one would be just whatever type of creature bait, beaver bait you want to. I uh, keep it pretty simple on the Carolina rig. Where do you usually put in when you go to Pickwick? Uh, I usually put in there at the state park. Uh, 
up north, uh, and I have put in at uh, Florence a few times in Alabama, but mostly on the northern end of Pickwick. Let's see. Top five Kentucky Lake spring baits. Uh, let's see. Spro Little John DD, uh, or no, just the Sh Spro Little John MD spring craw, uh, Bill Lewis rattle trap, and root beer. A KVD uh, 2.5 and green tomato. Now, this is an all time list. Um, a Rapala DT6 and Demon, and any jerk bait and that's your favorite and some sort of chartreuse purple or or similar color. The six inch axis does have a metal bill. I can tell you that. Alan Hackard, what's up, man? Alan pours baits. He's a great dude, man. If y'all want some custom swim baits, y'all need to hit him up. He pours something very similar to the old Scottsboro tackle swim bait. Hey, Brooks, hand me that. Uh, I'm, well, I'm going to show you some of Alan's baits real quick. There's a bag of swim baits over here. You'll have to take those ones off the peg. But see that bag with the purple zip on it? Yep. Grab that for me. This top water treble hook budget bait rod. You can find some really good top water bait rods that are only, you know, 50, 60 bucks. I would just get a Dobbins Colt like the 703 would be amazing. So this is this is one of the swim baits that uh, Alan poured for me. This color is called Gizzard Shad, very similar to the Scottsboro Tackle swim bait. Uh, I like this because it's pretty translucent, but you see it's got that shad-like belly to it. And the gizzards on our lake, especially in the spring, have this reddish pink hue to them up top. And dude knocked it out of the park with that. I'm going to get to fish with these a lot more this year. But I had a pretty pretty good sized bag of these. And well, you can see what's uh, going on. So uh, y'all find Alan um, up on Instagram. Alan, make sure you post your Instagram if you guys want to get some of these. What do you think about that, Brooks? Okay. Good. Yeah, it is good. All right. You can hang her back up there for me. Thank you for the assist, Bait Man Jr. Why is holding me? Well, I don't know. Uh, James, it's funny you said that. I ain't want to try to go to the East Tennessee Fishing Show. I just talked to Scott at Hog Farmer. So if I make it, I'll be hanging out in the Hog Farmer booth up there. Uh, definitely drop by the East Tennessee Fishing booth. And I'm going to go grab some homemade square bills. So, uh, let's see here. Go. I'm just going to try to answer questions in the order they come in. However, if you make a donation to the Super Chat, I will answer your question instantly. Um... And I'm just going to be honest, Bateman Jr. racked up last weekend. He don't need no more money. So if you want to throw a dollar to my fund, that's fine. If not, no big deal. But I am going to go in order here. Swim bait you don't hear about a lot is the bull herring. Uh, you're right, Jeremy. And, and me and Mike have talked about that. And it's a, be honest with you, Mike says it's one of his uh, slower sellers. But it's very popular on uh, the herring lakes, Lanier and Hartwell, Altoona, places like that. But nationally, it's not a big seller. But it's a killer bait. You can burn it really, really good. What do you think about the Tokyo rig as a cast and retrieve as opposed to punching? You know, I've got uh, I've got a couple different Tokyo rigs up here. Matter of fact, we're going to be on here for a long night. So we'll go ahead and break them out. You probably have a more bait smart. You probably have more baits than Dars than I do. Yeah, I definitely have more baits than you. Uh, so here's the VMC Tokyo rig, and uh, you see, it comes in this pack, and uh, your Tokyo rig here has this little drop wire. And what you do is you can take your uh, weight. It's just a six inch tungsten weight here. I need some pliers. Give me them. Hey, Brooks. There's some pliers right there, bud. Gray handle. You're looking right at them. That's a screwdriver. There you go. Bayman Jr., he knows what's up. So, you get your little Tokyo rig from VMC or wherever. A lot of guys make this. You can run your wire. I like to put my weight upside down. Run your wire down here. Through the middle of the weight. If you guys see that. 
And then you'll take your pliers, just take this end, kind of bend it up into a little band, like a crimp there. I'm going to push it up just a little bit so I can get a little bit tighter band and I don't want to lose my weight. So there, you have a Tokyo, and you can select you a creature bait. Looks we got a creature bait over here. Yeah, let's uh, yeah, let's bust out this six cents prawn, put it up on this Tokyo rig. Yeah, another one. It's okay, I don't know that one. But... This is gonna look cool, guys. If if you're fishing Florida, this color is called dark water bug. It's kind of like a black and blue plum, and then a black on the bottom. Definitely a good color if you want to punch. And then you just rig it up Texas style like normal. That's how I go in. I'm going to bring it right to the eye of the hook. Thanks, Brooks, for showing them the color. And then we'll go in the butt. <laughs> out the top. So the theory is there's a little swivel here. You tie off to that. <clears throat> And your bait is kind of suspended up off the bottom, if you see here. So when you drop down in a mat of grass, the weight goes down, the bait falls. And it's just off the bottom, just, just enough. But a lot of guys, and I can only talked about, they fish this like a Carolina rig. Just drag it real slow, and they shake it in place. You can drag it up to a stump or a brush pile or whatnot. I definitely want to experiment with this setup. And you can put any kind of bait you want to on there. That's just the example there of that 6'6 six, six prawn. Love that color though. That dark water bug is nasty. I think I'm gonna send my buddy old Brent Anderson at Vero Lakes some of these. All right, I'm gonna put this one back up, Brooks. Drop the kick out for me. And then I've got uh, this right here. This is the red one system. This is a wired punching weight. So we'll see if show you some differences in this real quick and I'll get back to answering some questions so this sucker comes pre-rigged uh, there's no swivel you can put one up there if you want to uh, it's got an EWG hook but this is a tungsten weight and see how sharp and pointy that is it is made for punching hardcore thick stuff so these red one uh, wired punching rigs have been really popular out west for a long long time they are a little pricey but We've got some heavier duty components compared to uh, the VMC Tokyo rig. Really got the same concept here. Um, the cool thing about the VMC though, you can put whatever size weight you want to. That's just a 5 16 but you can put a half, three quarter, one ounce, whatever you want to. So definitely a, a cool deal, cool comparison. Same style hook, I mean, imagine that. All right. All right, let's get back to answering some questions. Brooks is doing good getting them baits put back together. So, uh, a cab. Oh, uh, this is from my top spinner. When throwing a football jig in Texas, do you drag it or hop it more? Depending on the time of year, uh, there's a lot of times I drag a football jig, uh, but I will hop it quite a bit, especially if I know those bass are off the bottom. Um, like when I was on Pickwick this year, and uh, once I was. I stopped getting bites, like those fish were coming up off the bottom and falling on robo worms and other stuff. I would start hopping that football jig and I caught them quite a bit. Now, Texas rig, I really like to stroke a worm quite a bit. Um, especially when the fish are aggressive, I'll move it pretty fast and, and hop it two or three times and let it fall. If I'm fishing brush, I won't let it sit there pretty dang still. Um, hardly ever move it. Um, and if I'm fishing shell beds, it's another time I like to drag. So, um, what, Brooks? Can I tell them something more quick? Yeah, Brooks wants to tell everybody something. Um, I actually kind of finished Call of Duty's over now. I oh, you finished Call of Duty? Yeah, you know the thing where you have teammates that can't die. Yeah. The um. The story. Yeah. And you finished it? Yes, it's over. Wow. I'm sure those guys are really excited for you. Alright. I'll have to figure out I got I'll get this put back in the box here. 
Brooks Brooks likes Call of Duty, but uh, I'm pretty good myself. I will one v one anybody that wants to when my controller's not broke. Somebody broke my controller. Oh my gosh. Why can't I get these? Nothing frustrates me more than these companies that package stuff and they make it where once you open the package, you cannot get it back in there. Buy our stuff, but make sure you don't reuse it or try to resell it. When they get, when you get me to put the pack, put the bag back in, I um, always put it back in. You can't reach these though. No, the thing. All right, hold on. When it does that we got to get back on track with our viewers, Brooks. We've got really, really sidetracked. We'll figure out those later. All right, let's go on here. I'm sorry, guys. I won't try to ignore, ignore you. I uh, wanted to demonstrate that punch in uh, Tokyo Rig. So, where do I see the channel going in 2020? Hopefully, I can continue uploading videos every week. I think I've been pretty consistent in the last couple of weeks. I've been streaming every Saturday. Uh, uploading uh, Bateman Raw. I really want to go hard with Bateman Raw. Um, I've got some guys lined up. Uh, i got a good friend of mine, uh, Zach Grounds. Uh, he's a very opinionated guy, but he's been in the game, fished the, the highest level. And then uh, uh, Mikey Balls, if you're watching Balls, uh, Balls is going to join me for uh, Bateman Raw. We're going to talk big baits and how to... Uh, successfully be good at filming yourself because that's something I really respect Mikey for. He's very good filming himself. Um, he knows how to get the audio right, the lighting right, knows a lot about the GoPros, but he is an OG. Really ex excited for him. So, All right. Favorite trailer on a spinnerbait other than a split tail? Uh, I like a swimming super fluke on the back or a Kitek. Works really well. Really excited to put those six cents swim baits on the back. That's something you see a lot of pros doing now, is using a small paddle tail swim bait on a spinner bait. I, do I ever look at AliExpress or Alibaba for tackle? Yeah, I do. Uh, I usually can find these brands that are knocking off everybody on there. Uh, you can find the Guggen crank baits on there. Here's what the show, the, the two. Brooks, you got a fishing game on your Xbox? No. No? You do, I don't need it. Oh. He wants to talk Call of Duty. I had to remind him this is a fishing show. Most of us guys don't play Call of Duty, so. No, I don't. Okay. Hey, David, I'm sorry you got a miss. It's all good, bud. The good thing is on these streams, they come back. What's up, Mike Dove? I am going to the Classic in Birmingham. What's up, David Weston? I'm getting caught back up here. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, let's see. What do I think of the Molex GT football jigs? I haven't had them in hand, but uh, just from the looks of them, they look really good. Remind me, uh, similar to that to Jim Moyna jig with the way the recessed uh, line tie is in there. For swim baits, do you use a belly weighted hook or ball head set up more? Uh, if I'm fishing eight foot of water or less or around any cover, it's a belly weighted hook. If I'm fishing out deep, I want something exposed. Um, there are times when one, ben the benefits of one definitely outweigh the other. And uh, I've learned really quick um, that the beast hook can be fished out deep very well, as, uh, especially for suspended fish. Also depends on what type of swim bait it is. It's a... Uh, it's not universal like a jig where you can, you know, throw a football jig in 10 foot of water and 40 foot of water. There's times when each weighting is different and there's times where you don't even want a weighted hook. Like uh, this bait right here, uh, this is a 316. This is the Rising Sun that Lee Livesey talked about. Uh, this is the six inch version, but this is a beast hook that's weighted. A lot of guys use this with the beast hook that's unweighted and they fish it over the top of vegetation and they almost make it wake the surface, and they get a lot of fish to reveal and blow up. Uh, these are sweet. Uh, my buddies over at Scottsboro Tackle keep a good selection of these Rising Suns available, so check these guys out. This is a bait I'm going to throw a lot more uh, in 2020. Let's see. Older reels say made seven years ago, or older or newer reels. Which ones do you prefer? I like new reels, but there's some old ones I really like as well, Tyler. I love the old Cronarchs. Um, those are my, some of my favorite reels ever. Uh, the old uh, D-series Shimano's are excellent as well. 
Bake Man Jr. does got a loose tooth. We need to yank that thing out there. Kev, do you, all right, from Chris Morrow, my buddy over in Knoxville, Tennessee, one of my most knowledgeable football friends. Uh, Kev, do you use a swimming word? If so, what is your favorite brand? Uh, I have, and I've kept it really simple. I actually use the net bait. I think it's called the Bebopper. Uh, I like it pretty well. And then uh, just the old Zoom, uh, Speed Worm, uh, those two. And then I've used the Rage Cutter. I've actually probably used the Rage Cutter more in the last year or two, but I've used that uh, net bait one for a long time. That was the first time I really learned about the Swimming Worm. Uh, but, man, that's, that's a deal. A lot of guys using that on the tours in these early tournaments. That bait was on your plate like you were, it was actual. Like I was going to eat it? Yeah. I am going to eat that bait. Think you should use lead or tungsten with the Texas rig? Uh, lead is dead. Um, so I'm going with tungsten. And you're going to see more and more states start banning lead. So get used to it. And tungsten prices are down across the board the last couple of years too. Lots of companies making them now. So there's lots of competition. Uh, no alcohol in this, Dr. Pepper, Michael. Let's see, what percentage of lures that catch fish versus the ones that actually catch fish? You know, that's a that's a kind of crazy question because think about this. There's guys that catch fish on gummy worms. So I would say they all catch fish, but some are designed more to catch fishermen, even though they will catch them. I would say you're looking at really, honestly, about 30, 70. 30 just fishermen and 70 actually work. So... It, now, if it pops up on late night TV, I just avoid it. You know, if you see me pop up on late night TV pimping something, uh, fake man's hurting. I won't be on YouTube if that's going on. So, but no fishing. I went to a local hardware store and bought a spool of 16 gauge wire, 100 feet for three dollars. Can make any hook in a Tokyo rig plus the bonus of wires. Make any length you want. There you go. Simple, nice fishing hack. Kendall Arnold Fishing. Kendall, a good friend of mine. He's down there in that Paris, Tennessee area. He's got a YouTube channel. Make sure you go follow Kendall. Um, you're stuck with one lure to throw for the rest of your life, and it's always cold front conditions. What bait am I throwing? Always cold front. Uh, one lure. Uh, probably give me a half-ounce football jig. Green pumpkin uh, with some kind of green pumpkin trailer on it. Uh, I'll let that sucker soak all day. I'll, I'll catch them on that. It might not be many, but that will definitely work. I heard only 20% of the fishermen catch all the fish. You believe that? Yeah, I, I would believe that. I was told by the DNR, um, and this was in Tennessee, that if bass fishermen killed every bass they weighed in at every tournament, it wouldn't even put a 10% a dent in the population at Pickwick. Now, Saying that, Pickwick has got a lot better population than Kentucky Lake, and they Kentucky Lake guys basically did that for like three years. Um, but the bad spawns were probably in the carp hurt as much as anything. But um, there's a lot of fish that are never going to be caught too. Um, people always forget about that. Whitewell fishing. Have you ever heard of ritual angling rods? No, sir, I have not. All about that cod life. That is Brooks. Uh, he dropped some. He dropped thirty kills the other day. What's up, Tackle Junkie eighty one? Uh, I'm way behind on my chat. Hope you have a new year as well. Actually, thirty seven. Thanks for all the good comments on Bateman Raw. What's up, Frank Hazley? Goal for this year: catch a double digit, and I'm gonna try my best. Um, don't know anything about the Carvel Raptor one eighty. Man, I'm so behind the comments, guys. Uh, I, I'm trying to catch up, so I'm trying to fly through this. So if I skip over your comment, I'm sorry. One six cents bait to throw all day at Lake Kissimmee in early March. I'm going to throw a Snatch or a Quake 70 in some kind of gold or chrome pattern. That's going to be my deal, or maybe even a red. But I'm going to go lipless. I'm going to go Quake. Quake 70. What are you going to do your next on the water video? As soon as I get do some fishing, um, hopefully I can go fishing pretty soon. It's warming up, Dave. Um, 
I'm, I'm going to try to do some trips. We can probably make a video, too. When? We want to go fishing. Yeah, me and Brooks are going to make some videos. We're going to go slay some pond fish. That beast is actually a 6 aught. Uh, it's not a 10 aught one. Dude, what are you doing? Brooks is tickling me with baits. Is the favorite white bird spinning rod really a ducket? Uh, dude, stop. Uh, it is actually the same blank from what I've been told. So, for 49 bucks, you're basically getting a ducket at half the price. Are the really actually good rods? How often do I fish? Well, I used to fish about four days a week, but uh, working midnights and uh, past year, uh, probably this summer I fished one, maybe two days a week. Uh, but I don't always have time to gather up my filming stuff and whatnot. But this year I'm going to try to change that. I'm really going to try to um, film every time I go. It's going to be pretty realistic. If I don't catch them, I don't catch them. And, uh, that's, uh, but I really want to stick my channel more about the baits. But we'll throw in fishing when we can. Um, Big Man Jr. is kind of the star, but he... He's got to where he wants to act up and not sit still. So one of my biggest pet peeves is not sitting still. And he knows that. And not just on the live stream, but we'll be sitting in home and I'm watching football game. He's like hands all over my face and all kinds of stuff. You fish your swimming worms weightless or weighted? Uh, I usually just fish them with like an eighth ounce sinker. That's usually the best. Even sometimes even go lighter. When I first encountered the Whopper Plopper, I thought it was a joke. Boy, was I wrong. Man, I'll be honest. I think Whopper Plopper is kind of overrated. Um, it definitely catches fish, and lots of people call them. But, man, that Berkeley Chapo, Chapo is pretty legit, and it's cheaper. Um, but um, I tend to throw just a regular walking bait more than I do a plopper or just a buzz bait. Thanks, Robert Danielson. I appreciate it, bud. Making them awesome uh, spinnerbaits there at Angler Assets. Can't wait to see what you got coming next year. Yeah, you can get tungsten dirt cheap. That's exactly... You're right, Dave. So, I was wanting to make a video about the truth about tungsten. That's a great point. Three bucket list places I want to fish. Uh, Falcon. I got to film it, Falcon. I didn't really get to fish it. Uh, Clear Lake. And uh, I want to go to uh, one of these places up north. Thousand Islands would be great. Uh, St. Lawrence River. Those would be three bucket list places I want to go. I have fished Picasso bladed jigs. I like them quite a bit, actually. Was that I, you I seen briefly with Uncle Marky in that TW video? No, it wasn't. It was not me. But that was the Lake X. And uh, me and Mark actually went and filmed uh, a week later. Um, and cold front hit, we filmed all day at Lake X and caught five bass. It was tough, tough, tough. So, uh, that's actually Sunline uh, Assassin FC, um, uh, and then that Seaguar. Uh, I have used Reaction. It's really good stuff. Now I think they make called Crank FC, but Sunline Assassin, that's my go-to fluorocarbon. That and the canine down here. I like those quite a bit. And believe it or not... Uh, I use this high seas grand slam stuff quite a bit for mono. It's pretty pretty stout. It's pretty good uh, line for spinnerbait and stuff. Somebody gave me that and I just started using it. Brooks and I are going to be doing a lot of fishing. I've been on Google Maps and I've been looking for ponds and hidden places and uh, we're going to be doing a lot of backwoods fishing. I have caught one fish on a popper ever. Man, it took me a while. When I was little, I really was a top order nut. Uh, and I had to struggle with a popper. And once I figured out, I liked the popper. Favorite smallmouth bait for Kentucky Lake? Uh, that one's easy. I'll show it to you. This guy right here. The old short arm nighttime spinner bait. This is by Accent. I put me a double tail grub on the back. Just a black and red. I've caught more big smallmouth on a short arm spinner bait than any other bait. But that is not fishing. But you asked the question, my favorite uh, smallmouth bait on Kentucky Lake? There it is. There's nothing better 
and slow rolling that spinner bait at night, feeling that blade in a big brown fish just crush it. They'll about rip the rod out of your hand. Fishing goals for 2020. Uh, again, I want to catch a double digit. Uh, I want Brooks to catch a three pound plus fish. You think you can catch a three pounder? I think I can catch the same pounder your logo. The what? You know your logo that pound that fish you got on the jank shirt. No, on. Oh, you want to catch an eight pounder? Yeah. Okay. That you have on your logo. Okay, Brooks wants to catch an eight pounder, so uh, I think we can try to make it happen. We're going to have to get you trained up on a bait caster. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to go to Academy, get you some baits. And uh, I'm going to train you up on one of Papa's bait casters, okay? Okay. I'll give you your own bait casting rod. I mean, I already have a rod. But you, you got to have a bait caster. If you keep wearing your hat like that, someone's going to think you're an MS-13 gang, bud. All right. Uh, will six cents ever enter the spinner bait and vibrating jig market? Uh, spinner baits, maybe vibrating jig. I think, honestly, if you're going to come out with a vibrating jig, unless you're Picasso, they've done a really good job with what they got, but they're patented as well. You need to pat pattern with Z Man, and because uh, that blade connection is the deal. Now, there's some companies like Omega, the Raptor jig, that's really good as well. Um, but I really think uh, that that connection is the deal, and there's all, you know, not many people, a uh, jackhammer is really popular, but we don't need another $15, $16 bladed jig. Spinnerbait, uh, I could see happening, but uh, everyone makes, there's so many companies that make good spinnerbaits. Dude, I love those Rico blemishes. What's my favorite chatterbait rod? I actually, uh, uh, I answered this before. I don't, if I had to throw on one rod, it would be my dial with 7.4 uh, bladed jig rod, but I've used my 6 cents um lux rod i like it really really well uh when i've got to be pinpoint precise uh, fishing around shallow cover trying to fish stumps and stuff like that uh, where i don't have to worry about just bombing it way out there um but i like the 7.4 dial because it's got a little bit more back to backbone but it's got a soft tip but early season i really like a really soft rod and i've been using that sticks uh hybrid rod it's 99 bucks, and um, I posted a video. I caught like a five pounder on it, and it was great. Dude, Brooks can have anything he wants in this bait room. He knows it, but he really wants his own tackle and tackle box. So I'm going to give him a little corner here in the bait room. And I think I'm going to do a video, if you guys want to see it, of, of rearranging this whole bait room and getting organized because y'all only see this right here. Y'all don't see what's below my feet or this bomb that's gone off that I've just, I get stuff from companies and buy stuff and I just throw it in here and really got to get organized. Ever thought of pouring the Bateman line of soft plastics? I have no interest in pouring soft plastics. I will let companies like Six Cents and Zoom uh, do their thing and Strike King. Uh, I don't want, I don't want to in that fight. So, Yes, I have used Beast Coast jigs. I really like their jigs. I got some right over here. Um, and their swim baits. They're good. What's your favorite spinnerbait brand? I use War Eagle. Just trying to play around with some other companies. So I got three favorites I really like. And uh, I'll show you here. If you're a War Eagle guy. Uh, this one right here. This is a company called Spot Sticker. Uh, my buddy Ryan Coleman makes this. This is their Shad Head spinnerbait. Uh, I really like this because, see, it's got that tinsel in there. Um, I bought these at the East Tennessee Fishing Show last year, and I tell you what, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to spend about 100 bucks on some spot sticker spinner baits. And then this is the famous uh, Mini Me uh, by Spot Sticker Baits. And you'll notice one thing. Look at the bend. It's got that R bend. Um, you don't see a lot these days. But that's a very compact spinner bait. This is three-quarter ounce. All the weights down here on the shank and it's got a really sharp hook in it but I like these small compact spinner baits for burning uh, in a fall and it's also really good to fish out deep in the spring but you still get a small profile uh, these these color blades are amazing 
uh, on those overcast days and the water's a little dirtier, puts out more flash than you know a traditional chrome plated blade. So spot sticker, I really like them. When I'm fishing uh, shallow, let me find one here. I like these guys right here. And he was just on the show. His name is Robert Danielson. Uh, he makes angler asset spinner baits. And one thing I really like is he does a lot of stuff with these Indiana Colorado blades. Uh, he does some painted blade stuff. I really like these uh, fishing up shell. He makes them with the red. You can you can message him on Facebook. He'll do what you want to. And then he makes a double willow I like really well as well. That's the plasma table rock shad right there. That's a great spinner bait. And then my last one is uh, if I can get to one where it's easy to get to is this guy right here this is the one I've caught a ton of fish uh, this is the accent uh, river special it's got that pill style head that's just a thread fin shad color um, it's, it's beat up too these accent spinner baits are really really good that's the one Terry Bolton throws quite a bit Jacob Wheeler that's a great spinner bait it's got these little fluted blades on here uh, that's a 3 8 one. But I like the half ounce double willow. That's my top three spinner baits right there. And I throw a nickels quite a bit uh, as well. Nickels makes an excellent spinner bait too. So um, I like the nickels when I know they're really biting a spinner bait and you know the wire size and all that. It doesn't matter. Those fish are aggressive because they hold up really, really well. Whew. Thoughts on the KVD crankbait rod? Uh, great rod. Um, great rod especially for 80 bucks what is my jig setup uh 7 2 medium heavy uh six cent sensory rod and an eight to one to two sv uh and then if i'm gonna throw big heavy football jigs i'm going with the seven three heavy dival right now but i'm fixing to hopefully get my hands on a poison ardina uh, dude stop reaching across you don't need that let's see i have not used the rick klein trickster sb Lake X is a private lake. It ain't a pond. It's like 100 acres. And it is semi-private. Um, but it is made... My buddy has put a lot of work into it uh, to get the results he's had. So, not just anybody can go in there. And uh, I don't abuse my access to it. I try to go just two or three times a year or take special guests there. And uh, I'll be honest, man. And this might ruffle some feathers, but... There's no difference in fishing a private pond than there is leasing up all the deer land just to kill big deer. There is zero difference. I have done both, and I fished a couple private lakes that had giant fish in them and never got a bite. And I fished some of the best deer hunt or hunted some of the best private deer land in the country and never seen a deer. Um, just because it's closed off to the public does not mean it's any easier. Now. Saying that, there are times when it's absolutely stupid at Lake X, uh, but I've also hunted in fence, too. And um, I am not teaming up with Robert Turkla, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, Lunkers has messaged me several times, and I just have to turn him down. Um, Kevin, what's your opinions on people taking home double-digit bass to eat? You know what? They bought a fishing license. Take them home. Personally... Uh, I wouldn't take home a 10 pounder. Um, I, I've ate several bass in the pound to three pound range. They're great, but, um, uh, we're getting some heavy sh stuff here. Dan Sanders seems like everyone on YouTube is pro staff for several companies. How does compensation work? Is it mostly discount? Well, uh, I'm not going to get into my compensation with six cents, but I'm just, I'll just be very clear and be straight with you uh as always um uh, they take care of me and that's all you need to know and i love their products i've been using them for a long time and i'm not going to promote junk i'm not a guy that likes to jump on the train because everybody's doing it i'm going to do it um you know but that said if I want to tell you guys about this red eye shad right here from Strike King and tell you the best 
uh, color they make is the Delta Red, which I just made that up, but Delta Red is an excellent spring choice. You better get some. And tell you how awesome a red eye shad is in the spring. Casey, he ain't gonna bat an eye because he knows that that's just me uh, being honest with you guys. And hey, if Six Sense makes something that's not good, I'll let you know it's not good. But um, I think a lot of YouTubers really overvalue uh, their self. Uh, me, I'm just uh, I'm just a normal dude. So, how many YouTubers are getting uh, mortgage and retirement paid for fishing or is a pipe dream? I would say less. Uh, well, for YouTube, um, I would say on YouTube fishermen less than three percent. I would say probably about. Out of a hundred top hundred YouTube fishermen, bass fishermen, about five, maybe ten. But you know, it really takes a couple hundred thousand subscribers. But it's not the subscribers, guys. It's the views. If you're not getting views, it doesn't matter. Um, let's see. I fish a lot of Gene Lumis rods. What about the rods Gary put out? Yeah, uh, Edge Rods by Gary Lumis are excellent. I have a buddy that fish. Fishes them quite a bit. And he said, dude, I'm telling you, it's a guy I trust. He said, dude, I'm telling you, you'll be really, really impressed. I was pretty hesitant. I uh, bought one at a boat show. And he said, man, after fishing with it for two weeks, I, I bought me another one and I really like them. So. And uh, this guy, you know, if he told me this is the color crankbait, I'm catching them on. You can take it to the bank. It's, you can catch them on it. So. Dang, five spots on a Cloud9 Mini Mag. I love the Cloud9 Mini Mag. So you're not joining the Goober Squad. One rod, reel, one rod, one reel is the truth. He will outfish anyone. I like one rod, one reel, actually. If I was going to pick a, a Guggen Squad guy to fish with, that's the dude I would fish with. I love his energy. Uh, he's kind of knowledgeable. Uh, but I really like watching his videos. Um you know, I can tell when he's really trying to promote something, and I think you can tell in his voice he's not really excited about doing it, but I like one rod, one reel. I'd love to take him fishing. So That's right. I promote for free, guys. I'm doing all this for free. Um, what uh, what model of poison are you thinking about? I think I'm going to get the 7.2 medium heavy, but I think they make a 7.3 heavy, and for the way I fish with a jig, I think I might go with the heavy. Um, but man, that those poison Ardena rods are so light. It is stupid light. Uh, now, saying that, that sensory six cents reminds me of the old Ardena rods, uh, which were excellent. Excellent. Yeah, dude. Uh, I, I'm not... Uh, I'm just going to be honest with you. Let's say... And this ain't going to happen. But let's say Ben Milliken, my good buddy, says, Hey, I'm not with six cents anymore. I'm going to go promote, uh, you know, Berkeley. Um, I'm still going to be friends with Ben and we're still going to collaborate eventually and make videos, but I'm not just going to leave because he leaves or just because, you know, other YouTubers are doing that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little guy. As long as I'm still catching fish on your baits and you're taking care of me, that's, that's all I need to know there. Um, and basically these guys are swapping rod brands because they want to make sure they're promoting with the Guggen squads are promoting so they can get their stuff to pop up in the algorithms. It, it's, it's very silly, to be honest with you. Dude, if you like favorite rods, just fish favorite rods. There's nothing wrong with them. They're decent rods. Are they a Loomis? Are they a Dobbins? A Kistler? Even a Dival? Absolutely not. But for what they are, they're good rods. I mean, I've I fished them before. I'm telling you, I I had a 7.5 Lunkers rod, if it, and it was fine. It was a very versatile rod. It wasn't really heavy. Uh, the action was good on it. The Big Sexy is a very nice rod. Um, but... You know, there's great options out there, but I'm, I don't know. Uh, obviously, and I'm just going to let you guys know this. Um, those, I, I, I don't want to call anybody a liar because I'm not doing that, but you got to understand, I come from a retail side. When someone says, said, said they sold $100,000 of rods, y'all don't know how many rods that is. Let's just say they're... The most, the one they're selling the most is the favorite white bird. Simple math, that's two hundred, that's uh, that's twenty five thousand rods. Okay, you know I love my man Ben Milliken to death, 
but I don't think, and Ben's way more popular than these guys, but I don't think Ben Milliken sold 25,000 M after rides. So I'll rest my case. I'm pumped for Ben. He's got him a, got him another little one on the rock way. So, Lou's perfect cranking rod is a great rod, Joe. It's a very good uh, square bill, flat side, uh, medium diver rod. Great for like a series three, Bandit three hundred. Uh, you know, anything like that. Flat seventy five X. That's a really good rod. Uh, I've had a couple subscribers say they bought one. They really really like that. So, mm. yeah, bud. Crankbait. Huh? Crankbait. What crankbait? You know I have a crankbait. Your red one? Yeah. Don't get the hooks in you. Oh. We gotta get you some new bait. I know. Only have one. You only have one crankbait. Well, if I don't get get it hung up on me. Here's your crankbait. This is Brooks' only crankbait he's got so far. What are you going to do with it? You know what you need to do? You need to find an empty box and put your baits in it. That goes over here. You going to clean up my area here for me? Let's see here. Any kayak fishing? Man, I was thinking about that the other night. I was thinking, man, I, I think I might try to get me a kayak. Because, man, I found some stuff on Google Maps. You know what? Let me see if I can pull old Google Maps up right here. Let's get, let's go do a little playing on the Google Maps. <clears throat> if I can spell Google Earth. We got plenty of time tonight. We got about an hour before the ball drops. Got a locker in here. This thing will pop up. It may not. Never mind. Google Earth ain't going to pop up. Uh, but I found a couple really good lakes uh, that are isolated. It's on public land. But I really need a kayak to get to the juice. So Let's see. I do like Stash Fam. He's cool, man. I do like uh, Old Pig Patrol, Josh. He... Uh, I like how he roasts people in the comments. What trailer would you use in cold water on a football jig? And in the opposite, uh, what would it be in hot water? Man, I'll be honest. Um, I don't really change a whole lot. If I change anything, I'll change the jig. Um, I can't tell you I'd use the stroke craw from Six Cents, but I've used plenty of double tail grubs, and they work very well in cold water. Um, but I've got to start fishing the stroke of crawl to give you an honest uh, review of that. Uh, I like a pack of crawl. I like the pack of slim very well on a football jig. The spicy beaver. Uh, I will tell you, the more aggressive the trailer is, I'm going to use that more in the summer. Uh, the more it's just kind of got to fall and, and whatnot, uh, like a double tail grub, that's stuff I like to use in the winter. Hey, Dan the Man, a few bucks for the Bateman Jr. Fund. Appreciate it, Day Dan the Man. Say thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. So, uh, man, Brooks is going to be loaded down very soon. So, I am on Central Time, uh, but uh, I am on Central Time, but I don't know how YouTube does it. I think they schedule the live streams on my time. <clears throat> what if your buddy was in a wheelchair? Let's see. My buddy calls kayak fishing wheelchair for fishing well here's the deal man those kayak guys are really good fishermen most of them they're just doing it in a different way i'm not hating best weedless wacky hook i would i actually uh i like that the vmc nico hook uh the weedless one is the one i really like so a lot of guys have gone to that nico style hook for their wacky rig presentation i got a good idea dad what's your good idea if we can get some nails in my name probably in my room actually Maybe we can, like, you know, hook some baits. You want to hook baits in your room? Yeah. There's no way your mom is going to let you hang baits in your room. If we can get... You can't keep your room clean now. What if we put baits in your room? There's no way it stays clean. <clears throat> It'll be stay clean. Okay. What's up, Supreme Golf? 
Phoenix uh, makes a great crankbait rod, especially the X10. Uh, uh, the 13 is a great deep crankbait rod. Dan Sanders is the Mega Van Vision 110 worth the price, cheaper alternative. I love the Vision 110. I also love the Provoke 106. It's the the Provoke 106 is the best cheaper alternative uh, to Vision 110 out there. Now, saying that, uh, there are times when they'll eat that Omega Bass and they won't eat the Provoke and vice versa. 7.50 in Cali, man. It's uh, it's 9.53 where I'm at, so it's 10.53 in the Big Apple. The ball will be dropping in about an hour. I almost bought some of the Z-Man flipping jigs. Uh, I got the cross-eye football jig, and I really like it. So, uh, I like the owner sniper hook. Uh, I need to get some of the wheelless sniper hooks. The ones I got were a little small. I like the bigger ones. Uh, because a lot of the Nico worms I use are not really finesse worms. Like, I, I, I will Nico rig this clout. Um, and that's how I caught them in a past video. Um, and someone asked why I use tungsten uh, because it's smaller and I can get heavier weight uh, in these worms than I can with lead. I knew that you needed that. Hmm? I knew that you needed that. What? That. Oh, yeah? You knew I needed it. Could you read my mind? I was at BPS when a guy fish turned me. He told me he never used to use less than a five aught hook. I actually use a four aught more than I do a five. Um, especially when it comes to creature baits, I feel a lot of the creature baits, the bodies aren't as long as a five aught hook, and that four is usually perfect. Uh, especially for like a beaver, or you saw that was a four aught on that Tokyo rig with the prawn. That was perfect. Um, and if sometimes if they go right to the end of the body, and when you set the hook, it'll rip all the way down the middle, whereas if it's slide up a little bit, uh, it won't rip as much. Yes, you can cut and split that weed guard, man. Uh, <laughs> there's some guys that just use 25-pound floral and make their own. What trailer for the... Ike mini flip. I was thinking a pack of slim. Well, the mini flip is really compact. So I want to go with the compact trailer uh, that's got some action on it. Um, I've used, I use a baby D bomb. The baby D bomb is great on the back of that uh, mini flip. And I'll tell you a trick on that D bomb. Uh, don't pull the tails apart, cut the little tops off, and you can. Uh, the little appendages in the body, cut those off, and that thing swims really good. Uh, yeah. Brooks is drinking Orange Crush. Uh, no caffeine on that man. He needs to go to bed early tonight. So, well, Six Cents is they do have the Lux series, which is like one nineteen, and it's really good. I mean, Dobbins Fury is like one oh nine, um, so it's very comparable to a Dobbins Fury's. Uh, and the MF rods, uh, like uh, 120 bucks. I think a lot of guys, you know, six cents isn't carried in every store, and a lot of retailers don't even know they make rods. We should, would like to change that. And I think you're going to see me have more six cents rods this year. Definitely want to try more. But I'm going to hopefully get to try a lot of things. Dude, that owner makes great hooks. There is no better swim bait hook in my opinion than the owner beast hook the beast hook is freaking the deal now i know some guys really like that laser trocar but man this six out on this rising sun just sits perfectly if you, i couldn't draw it up any better than that what big swim baits am i throwing right now i'm not really throwing many because i haven't been fishing um but if i'm going to throw big swim baits i'm going to throw uh I'm not going to throw the Rising Sun just yet. You could in a shad pattern. I'm going to throw a Depths 175, uh, the Working Class Zero, Citizen, or Battle Shad. Mm, excuse me. I'm going to throw a Scottsboro Tackle, 6-inch, and I will throw a small Kitek. But uh, Big Swim Baits, uh, another company, Ignite Swim Baits, I like theirs really, really good. 
What will you be watching this year? FLW, Major League, or Elite Series? Chris, you know me. I'm going to watch them all, bud. Uh, they've all got tournaments I'm really excited about. Uh, I'm a fan of the sport. TRD crawls uh, are great. The first time I threw them this year, I caught several fish. Um, I've got some little creeks by my house. I think we're going to tear them up on that. Well, uh, I'm drinking Dr. Pepper tonight. Uh, I was out of Mountain Dew. I wanted something different. I have tried the Holiday Mountain Dew. Not a fan. I would like to see Six Cents make a salad, Silent Cloud 9 in a, like the 15. Um, I think that's the best all around. Cloud 9 is the 15 and the 20. Obviously, the 25 is very specialized. I like the 6 as well, but uh, I would love to see some silent ones. Amen, Dave. That is it. Man, I would love to, uh, to, to quote that. That's great. Dave says he watches all attorney shows. The idea that we as consumers have to choose from one or the other is just drama. It's all fishing and a lot can be learned. Absolutely. And I'll be honest, the people that are making the most drama out of this seem to be either the sponsors uh, and the fans. Either the fans, uh, they're trying to make you pick and choose, draw a line in the sand. I don't agree with that. And I know some of the anglers, they're like, man, I get discouraged when I get on social media. These people want to burn me at the stake because I fished, you know, I made a choice to fish a tour and support my family. You know, if it don't work out, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe I learned from my mistake, but man, uh, help us out. Ooh. Eight aught uh, on the 6 inch Scotch Burrow, Deep River Bassin. This is a great question. Bateman, do you know anything about a DRT Clash becoming available again? Man, I want to get my hands on that DR DRT Tiny Clash. That is a super versatile bait. And um, like I said, I'm going to get more and more into the swim bait game. I'm no expert uh, on hard swim baits. I've probably caught less than 30 bass. Uh, but uh, I'm learning, and I think that's something we're going to see this year is me learning to put more time in with these big baits. So, Kevin, do you have any pull in getting six cents to make any additional colors in their soft plastics? Probably not right now. Uh, I definitely don't because they're all relatively new and you got to understand from a company uh, perspective, this is their first run into soft plastics. If they burn through all these colors and sell out, yes, they probably would. But if they burn through only a limited amount of colors, I think what you could see is some colors go away. I'm looking for an old Zoom pumpkin blue baby brush hog. Do you know and recommend person that could custom make those? No, but I think I have some. I think I found those the other day in my dad's house. I will look. But they made a couple pumpkin bluish colors, um, but I'll check it out. I know exactly what color you're talking about. It's like a regular pumpkin with some blue flake, a little bit of transparent blue flake in there. I would look, uh, Brian uh, and my buddy Alan Hacker that was on here, uh, KOK Customs on Instagram, I believe that's his name. He can match about anything. Uh, that dude is really good. I don't think Six Cents makes an A-Rig. Uh, they make some great A-Rig heads. Uh, these are actually their A-Rig heads right here. They're very similar to the Divine Swimbait heads, but these are lighter. And I got these to pair up on my hog farmer um, rig. So I thought I would try these. They're a little heavier wire, but they're not really expensive. But I've got some plans to go some places where I'm not worried about hanging an A-rig and brush. And I want these heavier wire hooks. Plus, I can get away with throwing uh, some finesse style swim baits up on this with a longer hook. So... I'm a hog farmer guy. That's about the only rig you're going to see me throw. Um, now, if I'm obviously if I'm off fishing somewhere and I need an A rig and can't grab one up, I'm oh, I'm going to try to go with the young. So, ooh, my favorite D bomb color is actually called Dill Pickle, but Superbug is my number two. Oh yeah, that's probably coming, Jesse. Uh, have I looked at the swimming Zacco thoughts? Uh, 
I love the Zacco. That's probably been one of my favorite chatterbait trailers uh, out there. Uh, what videos I have put out there, me fishing a jackhammer, everything's been with the Zacco. Uh, the, I'll be interested to see the paddle tail behind on a um, chatterbait. Some paddle tails work really good behind one, some don't. So, Dude, my dad has some great stuff. You know, me and him are kind of fighting right now because he wants to sell it all. And I'm like, dude, just give it to me. But it is my dad's tackle. And I it's don't want to hurt his feelings, but a lot of it ain't worth grap, crap. But it's sentimental to me. So I don't want to see him just like try to sell it. I, there's some of the stuff I want to pass down to Brooks. But dude, he's got some crazy stuff. And, and like I said, some of it's soft plastics that ain't worth nothing. Uh, this Rising Sun, uh, close up, this is the bluegill color. Um, and it's been sitting in a box for a while. And believe it or not, I actually collected some dust and kind of come up this grayish color. But man, this thing is really sick. Matter of fact, I've got another one somewhere up here, but I need this box, but there's too much stuff on top of it. Yeah. What's going on with this thing? All right. Uh, someone said something about little creeper swim baits. I've got a whole box of the trash fish over here. That is one of my favorite swim baits. Yeah, uh, uh, big bite baits uh, makes can make you cinco's and custom colors. Um, they they actually own another company and they they'll make you your own stuff. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there. So, my someone told me Dave Zoom you got to order ten thousand units. That's a lot of freaking baits. But you could get ten buddies to go in for a thousand, you'd be all right. So, my last fish of 2019 came on a first cast ever for me throwing a six-inch rising sun and right redhead. Top five baits I've ever had. 38 degree water, dude. That's awesome. Love the name, bitchin' bass and TV. Uh, that is awesome, man. Swim bait or die. Tell us about the six inch glide I heard about. Yeah, I can tell you that it's pretty damn secret and I shouldn't have said anything about it and I got in trouble about that. So I'll just put it that way. Picasso does make great A rigs. I really like their uh, bait ball junior. What you doing down there, homie? Huh? Okay. You found any secrets down there? Yes. You did? Okay. Roland Martin did a chatterbait video using this this new swing Zacco. Oh, Roland Martin. I'm surprised he didn't put a helicopter lure behind that son of a bitch. Pardon my French bait man, Junior. Don't repeat that. Does Hog Farmer make the best scrounger head? Well, I think Hog Farmer makes a really good one. Um, there's so many companies that make good ones. Uh, if you want to go with lighter... Um, or do you want to put a jerky J or spunk shed on it? Um, I'll be honest, three quarter for fishing 12 foot or deeper is the way to go. Period. Um, if you're throwing a jerky J or the trim or spunk shed and five inch, three quarter ounce, I am convinced. But if you want to throw things like a super flip junior or smaller ones, um, I would go with the, you know, something like a quarter ounce Picasso. Uh, you, I think you can get quarter ounce and three eighths ounce, um, uh, god dang, hog wobblers. Um, the hog wobbler is really good, but he's, I think he's coming out with one with a finesse hook soon, so I'm really excited about that. Dude, what are you doing? Come on. He's doing like he does at the restaurant, crawling under tables and stuff. Thank you, uh, Will Perryman. Bateman offered to buy your dad's gear. I think I will do it. Come on, get over here. Okay. I don't want you crawling around my ankles no more. Sometimes we gotta we gotta tell them what they don't want to hear. He knows he he used to like crawling around in the, the restaurants and then he get that butt spanked. Roland Martin King of Cinco's. Roland Martin King of having everybody else fish for him and get information. Uh, that's how I feel about that. I, Trump, Trump's like the Teflon Don. Yeah, I did. That is pretty cool. Scott Martin went fish with uh, Donald Trump Jr. I'm not like huge into politics, but it is cool to see somebody out of our um, best way, or, or high upper in government. Although he's not really anything, he's the president's son. But going fishing with the guy, I mean, that's obviously good publicity. 
um, as far as I'm concerned. And you know, I really don't care if that gun Bill Clinton want to go bass fishing me. I take old Slick Willie. We go catch a few janks. Yeah, I I I definitely make a better video with Scott than Roland. I think Scott's a really good guy. And I like messing with him. Uh, he has treated me excellent. Every time I've met Scott, uh, he's been really good to me. And I'll be honest, Scott gave me some Guggen baits before they were ever on the market. And I messed with them, and they weren't bad. But, um, you know, me personally, I'm not going to promote anything Guggen. Uh, I mean, I'll give you an honest review and try them. And, hey, if you want to throw them, I'm not saying they don't catch fish because they do. Uh, but I'm I'm pretty loyal to Strike King and Six Sense and Soft Plastics and Zoom and that's where I'll stay. So, dude, they have plenty of rods. Uh, if you want sensitive bottom contact, go with the Sensory. It is two hundred something dollars. Uh, but the Deluxe Rod for moving baits and spinner baits, the Seven One Medium Heavy Fast is a great rod. Really good rod. Dude, the Axis is amazing. So, uh, I'm probably, I'm probably going to get in trouble. Am I busting out the Axis right now? Are we going to show the stick-up bait? Don't show that. So, here's, this is going to be the new package for, for this. Uh, this is all I can say. Um, can't show you the bait. But I can show you the, the package to Axis Metal 2.0. It'll be out soon because this is the official packaging. Now, some guys, um, I had to, I, I can't say anything else, period. I could jeopardize my work with Six Cents by showing you this bait. Is so, that, is that this? Yeah, that's Six Cents. Mm. And uh, you guys, uh, do you guys want me to do streams and all that? No, not the six cents, the secret one. That is the secret one. You can't show that. Yeah, Chad, that is a good point. I don't want to be on the same lake as Clinton. I could, uh, I could definitely, uh, wind up dead in a, uh, what is it that they got? I could, I could be in one of those spillways. They would... It has been on their website, but what's on their website is not the final product. So the, what I've got is the final product. So some guys have um, got some of the prototype ones uh, in their premium uh, Super 6 box. and But those aren't the final ones. So it's pretty cool for Casey to send out those prototypes. Can Mini Baitman show us your fa his favorite bait? What's your favorite bait? Hmm? Swim bait. Go find your swim bait. Go find your favorite swim bait. Where? Well, find you one. <laughs> He's going to find him a swim bait. That's his favorite bait. Hey, Kevin, did Mega Bass Levante get recalled? Uh, I think there's a new version of the Levante coming out, is what it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to put that in jeopardy. Is that your favorite one? Look. That's your favorite one? Okay. Epstein didn't kill himself. He got suicided. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. I don't really follow all that really heavily, but there's some weird... As a guy that used to work... I worked for a juvenile detention center for about a couple years, and I was basically a youth worker, and... You have to check on people anytime they're in isolation, like every 10 minutes. So it's really crazy all that stuff happened. You know, anytime somebody's on suicide watch, that's a big deal. Thank you, St. Crest, for the assist. Fist bump to you, bud. I don't know everything. Don't claim to know everything. I got some guy really freaking mad today on the internet because I told him OG wiggle warts are overrated and he was pretty mad um yeah let's see here i've got a uh a good post i want to uh find here 
my buddy old uh, Justin Atkins, Force Wood Cup winner, he sent me this meme today, which he misspelled, but a Spro rock crawler is better than a wiggle wart. Changed my mind. And, dude, this guy went ballistic when I said that. But, uh, I think OG wiggle warts are great, but man, uh, it's different. Uh, Waddle Bait and the Axis have a totally different action. You're going to get more of a traditional square bill action out of the Axis. The Waddle Bait is kind of a unique niche bait. Um, uh, but you're going to get more of like an S crank style out of uh, the Axis. But it's, it's, it's going to jerk more. It's not going to just kind of go like this. It's going to dive and you'll have a quick jerk and go back straight. Uh, but the, the best thing about the Axis is when it deflects off cover. White well fishing, thank you so much for the for the donation, man. Appreciate that five dollars, man. Brooks, you're gonna get up. Brooke, this is your favorite swim bait. Out of all those baits on my wall, this is your favorite swim bait. All right, you get to show it off then. And you gotta tell them why you like it, okay? You get my my shelf stock back up. You just got five dollars. You gonna tell them thank you? You gotta get over here and say thank you. Thank you. I heard that name. Uh, Axis does, does kind of have one. So, Baitman Jr. has picked out his favorite swim bait, and I'm kind of surprised. All right, get it out there to show everybody you know where the camera's at. It's a pretty good choice. This is the Big Bite Suicide Shad. And so, the Suicide Shad is a great swim bait. It's great on Alabama rigs. It's great rigged up on a swim bait hook. And that color is, what color you got there, bub? Is that Blading Shad? I think that's. Yep, it's called Blading yeah. Shad. So, show them it's got a little hook slot on the belly. Yeah, man, you're a pro. So, you can rig this with a uh, weighted hook, or you can put a jig head. Uh, very slender profile on the Blading Shad. Very underrated swim bait, but it, told, great on Alabama rig. You told me you said why did why do I like it? You told. So why you like that? You tell people. Um, because there's like, it's like normal blood, but it's just like. So it looks like a dying fish. Yeah. You think a bass would want to eat that? Good call, Brooks. Good call. We can put the hook on there. Uh, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Chris. And I, I tried to get the dude back on it. I was in this group talking about wooden baits. And I'm like, all right, dude, I'm going to try to get you back up on there. Rapala Shadrack, good winter bait on Kentucky Lake. Absolutely, James Queen, one of the best. I don't know if they'll do a pre-sale on uh, the Axis. Subscribe to the Six Cents newsletter. Uh, that's going to be the best way. Uh, and if I find out some top secret info when it's going to be released, I'll let you guys know. Sometimes, I'll be honest, I, I like to stir people up and get a reaction, but I, I, I do really agree with Chris. It, the Wiggle War is one of the most overrated crankbaits of all time. It's a great bait. It catches plenty of fish. But dude, a Spro Rock Crawler, I catch just as many fish as the old Wiggle War. They're a lot, they run better out of the package. They have better hooks. The colors are good. You don't need the 200 different colors of Wiggle War. All you need is a red, a brown, and something transparent. Right now. Um, the bills don't grind down near as fast. It's uh, it casts ten times better. Uh, those guys that get all boners for old wiggle warts are just trying to collect or flip baits and make money. They don't want people to know that there's better baits out there because the value in those wiggle warts goes down. When we get inside, I'll be collecting all the baits. You know what, Will? If I'm the old Roland Martin and Brooks over here has got all the people's attention. And he's like Scott. I would be a really proud dad, to be honest with you. I'm pretty proud of this guy anyway. He's gotten really good with his reading and drawing. Hey, go get your Scooby-Doo drawing. Wait, my Scooby-Doo drawing? Yeah. Okay. He's been drawing. He's pretty good. I'm gonna, I I got to show. I got a proud dad moment here. So, Clint, yeah, I'm going to try to fish pretty soon. Um, next week or two, hopefully. Dude, I'll take a rock crawler and the curve over the wiggle wart. 
Now, that said, there are times in lakes that wigglewort is really dominant, and I ain't stupid. So what I was told is the OG wart and the new ones, the only difference, well, I know the plastic's different, so the sound's different, but as far as the bait, the only difference is one degree in eye tie. And you can't tell me one degree makes that big a difference. Old Hickory, woo, water temp about 50. Any suggestions I might not have thought of? Hmm, I'm sure, I haven't been to Old Hickory, it's kind of a gar hole. So hats off, Chad, for you to fish there. Um, but you know, I tell you what, if you throw if you haven't got a blade bait tied on, I definitely have a blade bait tied on. Um, uh, if it gets tough, that could be a good possibility. A small underspin as well. Let's see, Bandit Two Hundred is a great bait. There you go, Chad Simmons. There's just suggesting the OG, the Bandit Two Hundred, Old Hickory, Pearl Splatterback, a root beer color. Uh, yeah, Kentucky Lake, or I'm going to just, I've got a fish, so if you see some pond fishing on this channel, you might, I may just have to go film myself testing baits over here at the pond by my house. I think that'd be a cool video, so, um, Kentucky Lake isn't trash. It's getting better, so I've been hard on Kentucky Lake, but the weights are really good right now. It's taking 20 to 25 pounds. It took 28 pounds to win two weeks ago, a guy from my work, uh, shout out to him. Smoked them. I don't think Scott Martin designed Jack, to be honest with you. I think they all kind of collaborated on that. I wasn't trying to be mean at Scott. I just think they, it was a co collaboration with a lot of guys. Because if you look at the old Guggen videos, they used the crap out of the Strike King structure bug. Uh, but... And they use a lot of Cinco's. And they use a lot of shaky worms. So I'm gonna I work with six cents. We're uh you know, I'm gonna design a few more colors hopefully, and we'll see what uh, goes on. Jank juice has been a hit, so I'm gonna have to I'm actually gonna design mine in Photoshop. Dude, uh, old hickory in the fall has actually treated me pretty good. Um uh, it seems the shallower I get at Old Hickory in the fall, the better I've caught them. Caught them really good on a little bitty rattle trap and caught them on a really, like a finesse worm on an eighth ounce shaky head in like a foot of water. And uh, I caught them on a frog pretty decent there at Old Hickory. I'm not a good frog fisherman, so if I'm catching them on it, they bet they're probably biting it really good. So, Dude, uh, Scott's Burl is really good. Uh, weedless swim bait is probably one of my favorites out there and plus I'll be honest with you guys I like to support people that support me but Tim and Andrew at Scottsboro Tackle are some of the nicest people on the planet and they have an amazing shop there at Gunnersville and uh, I was really flattered when the Jaint Juice color kind of went public and dealers could buy it you know, Tim ordered a bunch and he made a post on Instagram and sold a bunch of them that, hey, got the jank juice in. And I said, hey, man, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to pimp my color or anything. He said, no, dude, you, you always take care of me. Really good people, man. And uh, he knows it catches fish. So that's one thing about Scottsboro Tackle. They sell baits that catch fish. There's a lot of tackle shops that carry tons of baits, but limited ones, you know, catch fish. And it is hard, too, because, you know, local companies pop up, and guys are always trying to make it. And This is side of the retail. I'll tell you guys it's not fun. Is guys are coming in, please sell my baits, please sell my baits, and a lot of them are the same as everything else. And you really don't want to tell people no. But Check out Scooby-Doo by Brooks. You got to tell them who these guys are. Who's this? Fred. Fred? And Daphne. Daphne? Velma. Shaggy Scooby. Dude, you even spelled Scooby right, so I'm pretty proud of you. To be honest, guys, I can't even draw that good. I'm being dead serious. You got the little, you got the tie on, Fred. Yeah. What else you got to wear? Ooh, good question, Dave. I'll get right back to you. You draw Ho Ho? 
Look at Brooke's Christmas drawing. Who now who all is in here? What? Who's all in here? Gingerbread man? Our elf. Elf? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then Ho Ho? Yeah. Okay. Show him again. He's an artiste. Alright, you can put it back. Good job, Brooks. Give him some loves. Thank you so much, Sean Titsworth. Tell Sean, thank you for the thank donation. You. Uh, Jank Juice is a really good color. And, and, and the reason I like, I didn't want that bright school bus yellow is I didn't want people to be like, whoa, uh, that's too much. Is that it's, it's really good in some off color water, but it will work in that clear water. So. Is that $99? American Fishing Legacy is good people. I, I know Adam that used to work there. I think he still does. He's a really good dude. They have a great trade-in program on rods. Dude, I think Brooks needs to design some colors. That's a great point. Brooks, what two colors would you put on a crankbait? Um, you got a hair on your nose. Um, now, it's got to catch fish. Yeah, but... What two colors are you putting on a crankbait? Like when it's a um, you know what I like, like when it's um. What a, two colors you want to put on a crankbait? Dark water, probably yellow and bright yellow and bright. Brown. Yeah, bright. Smart kid. He said, "I want to put dark yellow and brown." No bright. I bright said, yellow and brown, if the water's dark. That's a good good deal, so they can see it better, right? And what if it's clear water? You have to use dark. Clear? So you want clear baits of clear water, dark and dark dark water. We're going to have fun when we go in and can. Jank Juice is the color I designed for six cents. And I'll show it to you right here, bud. And the six cents is black. Right. That ain't it. If y'all haven't ever seen the old Jank Juice. This is, you know, I've always been a chartreuse purple guy, but Casey at Six Cents let me design this color right here. It's kind of a faded purple silver. It's really hard to see on the light. And then a, a muted uh, chartreuse. That is old Jank Juice. So you kind of get that gizzard shad look, but you get a little bit of that chartreuse belly. Look at that. Now, you can definitely tell the purple one at that angle. Um. But it's not as bright as some of the chartreuse purples I've ever used, but I didn't want it that way, and I really like this. It's I, awesome in a jerk bait. I got a question. Yes, Brooks, what's your question, bud? That's $3 for me to answer it. Did you hear it? Did you even make up six cents or is it true? Did I what? Did you even um made up six cents? What do you mean? Like, did you even made up six cents or No, the six cents is not my company. Somebody else's I know, but the six cents all over here. I know. There's six cents all over here, man. I use it all the time. What are you trying to say? <sighs> Never mind, okay. Oh, or saying, did I even make that color bait? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I love bag. Oh, bagleys are nice. All right, get back here. I'll answer this question. Uh, uh, is most admired pro, least admired. My, one of the pros I admire a whole lot is Ke uh, Steve Kennedy. The reason I like Steve Kennedy is because Kennedy does things on his own. He fishes outside the box. He's not full of sponsors. He's even said, unless you're paying me, I'm not talking to, um, I'm not wrapping you on my boat. I'm going to wear the Auburn Tigers wrap on the boat in Jersey. And I really like Steve Kennedy. And I've had this conversation. If he wins a classic, he's got to be considered one of the greatest out there because he's won a lot of stuff. I ha that's a good point, uh, but now I've got to design some new clothing. If this doesn't offend anybody, I wanted to share. You remember the show Double Dare on Nickelodeon, or am I the only person that remembers Double Dare? I wanted to put one that says Double D's, and then on the bottom digits, you know. 
somehow incorporate that Double Dare logo with a couple janks that says, I love dub Double Ds. How do you even make baits? How do you even make baits? Yeah. Well, you need to watch some YouTube on how to make baits. You got to pour the plastic in a mold. And a mold is like, well, you know, like mm -hmm. a shell, uh, mm -hmm. what a shell looks like. A mold mm -hmm. is an aluminum shell and mm -hmm. you pour the plastic in it and it gets hot. Mm -hmm. Then you cool it down and you peel the plastic mm -hmm. out and it looks like that. So. Wait, I remember how when we watched If that. you could fish with one person, who would it be and where would you want to go? All right, I'm going to be honest with you. If I could fish with one person, who would it be and where would I want to go? I would take my dad, and we would probably go fish Kentucky Lake and anywhere around the Moores area. I, um, because my dad can't fish anymore, and I've spent a lot of time with my dad on the lake, and he's the one that really got me into the fishing, into the baits and everything. And uh, of all the people out here, if I could just go fishing with him some more, that's all I want, man. Uh, and then hopefully I can fish a lot with Bateman Jr. And... Uh, you know, he may never want to fish after this year, and that's okay. But uh, Sean, the Jank shirts are in the link in my description. Um, it's a spread shirt website. He's a little... Um, but uh, least admired. Uh, I'm going to... I got to think about that just for a second. Okay, yeah. Jason Christie on the FLW side. The dude's a fraud and a fake. Um, don't care nothing about it. Basically just paid his way in to fish the FLW tour. Uh, he's quit multiple tournaments, always has an excuse. Uh, there's somebody out there that would love his spot to fish the tour, and he's taking it, and I don't like that. So. He won't, well, I don't, I don't know. The 10 out. Horse Monte. Water temps on Kentucky Lake are like uh, mid to low 50s. It warmed up a lot last week. Yes, uh, I've seen the double digit shirt with the Dunkin' Donuts logo. I, I'm wanting to use the Double Dare logo and put double D's, um, and somehow put a bass in there. I don't, I don't know if I can get that, pull that off, but I'll work on it. So, um. uh, the Jason Christie I'm talking about is not the Jason Christie that fishes MLF. It is Jason Christie the poser? So, um, I just want to make that very clear. If you're not sure who I'm talking about, get on Facebook and look up Randy Flowers. My boy Randy, um, he is a loose cannon. And no, I'm not him. I don't have a fake account. So, Dude, I, I would love to have fished Kentucky Lake in the 60s or 70s just to see, compare it to the changes are now. Even the structure of the lake's changed. Like, um, Barkley Lake is, some of the islands I remember on North Barkley have eroded away. Uh, and eventually those will make some great underwater structure, but I used to remember going up north of the dam and fishing those islands uh, and those individual stumps and my fishing partner. We'd catch some big here's, fish. I want owl. What do you want? Um, here's what I would do if I made a bait. What would you do if you made a bait? Remember, the microphone's right there. Okay. Um, I would take plastic, like, make the shape where the bait goes and... Make a wallet and make a shade and then make a flat park and then spray paint it. You would spray paint your baits? Mm -hmm. Okay, that works. I'll be honest, guys. Uh, he, whoever runs Rainy Flowers, uh, I don't know him, but um, I agree with Randy like 99% of the time. Uh, uh, if y'all want some laughs now, there's some times Randy posts some stuff I don't really like and really bothers me, but for the most of the part, um, Randy's right. Um, let's see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. is it? Uh, the, no. Uh, the the Jason Christie I'm talking about spells his name like this. Dude, the bait man is not big, but you know what, Ten Horse Monty. Uh, link me your channel. I'll hit you with that sub, man. Um, I'm not ashamed to do that. I see a lot of these YouTubers and people get on their chat and they're like, would you sub to my channel? I'll sub to the channel. They blow them off. You know what? If y'all guys are good enough to get in here and watch me stream, I'm going to give you a sub. And chances are I might even comment on your video. <clears throat> Whoa. I tell you a guy I liked uh, watching and I just found it. I've never seen this guy before and I feel like we have a lot in common. 
and this guy's name is Debo's Fishing Adventures. And I thought, for the most part, when watching his videos, he kept it real. He wasn't a big sponsor hoe. Uh, he knew about what he was talking about. He was a very good speaker. And I was like, so I left him a comment. Said, Dude, I've been looking for a channel like this. You know, and I I would like to go hang out with that guy. I think me and old Debo's could uh, throw some baits at each other. And Man, I got a hair right here. It's just getting wild. I mean, hmm? I said I remember um when we watched the, um video where we were so made of baits. Mm-hmm. Out of wax. Yep. You did make a bait out of wax. I think Randy's in semi-retirement, to be honest with you. So, yeah, I'm really excited to to grab a poison Ardina. Hopefully, Uncle Sam will let me get a little refund this year, so I can grab me one. Cause I'm I'm so poor, I gotta take a I gotta fart to get a cent. So, I will definitely do that, man. I will definitely do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it right now. Go to channel. I'm gonna I'm gonna go. But no, I'm gonna hit that sub button. Sub. Just did it, bud. You're up to 12 subscribers. Baitman is now a sub of your channel. I've been watching on your videos. You've been watching all my videos, Brooks. Yes. No, I've been I doing. love tactical bassing, man. They're great guys. So tactical bassing, uh, Mikey balls, obviously Millican fishing. I like the Debo's guy. I got to watch more of his videos. Uh, those are some of my favorites. And I'll be honest, I find some random videos that are really good. Like Billy Lawson, Lake Fort Guide. I like watching his stuff. I don't like watching Darian's fishing. Darian's shorts are too short. So if you're subscribed to Darian, just unsubscribe, man. He's He sucks at basketball. He's got you know super short shorts. I mean, he wants to be Larry Bird. Uh, sub to Luke Duncan. He's a good dude. Um, you know what? Yes, bud. Um, what, you know what? I do want to go on your shows. Hmm. Um, subscribe and, subscribe and hit that sub. I notice you subscribe and hit that sub button all the time. I'm got this dude watches some crazy kid stuff, so. No, not your video. Oh, you tell them. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe and like. Yeah, so if you're new to the channel here, subscribe, hit the leave like comments. button. And leave comments. Hit so, that bell. Turn and hit the bell. Uh, let's see here. So, one thing YouTube really rewards and what helps me grow as a creator is, well, 165 people watching. Uh, that means 165 people are watching Bateman, and I don't have to worry about anybody out there drinking and driving uh, because they're watching me talk about baits. And I appreciate that. Um, so if you are out tonight and you're having a drink, make sure you're not driving. Uh, fortunately, I've had a couple friends that's lost family members due to something like that. Dude, Chris Chris Merle, you're the man. I'm going to see you at the East Tennessee Fishing Show. If I don't, I'm going to see you at Knoxville for a basketball game or anything. I hope you have a good New Year, brother. Uh, God bless you, my friend. Question remains, do I like flavor dips? I'm a welfare bear guy, Grizzly Wintergreen, and um, I've almost, I, I'm, I'm, I'm about to quit. So I, I've been, I haven't been dipping at work and I'm about to make it home. Oh, man, I got to get this live giveaway going, Sean. I'm sorry. Uh, I just haven't had time to gather up everything. So, but I wanted to make a kind of a cool video to lead up to that. Uh, but we're going to get some giveaway going, but I'll start with a small one. Then we're going to do a big one. How about that? So check out, look for Instagram tomorrow, kick off the new year, giveaway a Bateman box. So I'll make, I'll make something for the, the, um, the, um, I'll tell you what, bitch and bass. I'm going to go to your channel right now. Um, I don't like doing sub for sub. I've always told people that, but you know what? Uh, no content, but I want to make sure I get to watch that first video you upload. So I'm going to hit the subscribe button there, buddy. Uh, if you're cool enough to hang out with me here on the live stream, I'm going to be generous enough to give you the first subscription you got from the Bateman TV. Um, I need to tell you something. I need to tell you something. Yep. Um, I know why I watch kids stuff. Why do you watch kids stuff? Because you're a kid? Yes. 
I agree, Brooks. Great observation, bud. Brooks watches kids' videos because he's a kid. Uh, so YouTube is definitely uh, changing the way they send out videos to recommendations and stuff because they don't want this guy watching a video that's targeted to adults and, you know, putting gun ads and, well, they don't do gun ads anyway, but, you know, targeting adult-style ads, maybe it's that prescription pill, you know, that keeps you a little bit or something. Uh, they don't want him seeing that kind of stuff, but uh, that's that's changed. So what's the difficult part about fishing, and, and me and um, Ben Milliken have talked about it, is so I'm making this video, and what, who is to tell me I'm not allowed to keep put Bateman Jr. in my video? We're not targeting kids. You know, this is life. This is growing up as a dad. You know, I want to take him fishing, and if he wants to document it, so what? But we're not trying to show fishing videos for all the kids. I mean, my audience is like almost all, um, you know, eight, uh, I would say 21 to 35, if not older. I mean, I can watch your videos, right? Yeah. So, but if a kid like Brooks or a younger kid wants to watch one of my videos, obviously... I want to educate you guys or, or them and about baits and techniques and stuff like that. So don't punish people like me and and, and Ben and, and guys like Tactical Bass and whoever that aren't trying to target kids on purpose. But you know the Guggen Squad that is their viewership is that 12 to 21 year old range, and they're not trying to in a way, but it is going to affect them. So. Whew. New Tech Elite Mega Blade Jig is a killer bait. Darius, what's up, man? You need me and you need to come, go hang out and go fishing, man. Uh, I told you I'm, I'm gonna be available soon. We need to try that. I was about to say it earlier. Darius, I know they've been biting over around a bridge. I was don't, about to don't say. Don't yank my chain. So. When do you think there will be a fist fight on bass like NASCAR? Hopefully, never. We don't. But I have seen a fist fight. My buddy Sam Lashley got into it with a guy at one time, and, and Sam apologized. It was a bad deal. So I've seen some fist fights at bass tournaments. Uh oh. Guess who's coming in here? Is that Nelly? I think Bait Girl is going to come in here for a second. No. 60. Woo, Brooke, shut that door. It's cold in here, bub. I said no. What do I think of the Shyrite Wolf comment? You know what? Uh, I like Fletcher. He's a good dude. He's a friend of mine. Uh, so if Fletcher decided, if Fletcher wanted to say that and he stands behind it, more power to him. Um, did I have to agree with it? No, I don't have to agree with it, but... Yeah, I like keeping it real fishing. That dude's from around Nashville. Uh, or I like realistic fishing. Keeping it real fishing. Uh, he's out from out west, I believe. Um, I really like his stuff, too. And then you got realistic fishing. Any idea why a lot of pros are switching to lose? Yeah. That's why a lot of pros are switching to lose. Uh, and, and to be honest, the Quantum brand is not what it used to be. So a lot of those guys are um, changing it. Oh we got 19 minutes till it's officially 2020 um. in the United States of America. The best country there ever was to be. Um, yes. I'm going to make something for the giveaway. Oh, you're, go you're going to make something for the giveaway? What are you going to make? I can't tell. You can't tell. Okay. How about a customized thank you card from Bateman and Bateman Jr.? Um, can you do that? Mm -hmm. All right, fist bump it. If we can get, ten, if we can get ten thousand likes, ten, okay. I don't think we'll get ten thousand likes, but we'll we'll, we'll get you a, a customized. Bateman Jr. wants to give away a custom Bateman Jr. thank you card. Uh, we'll we'll put it with the Bateman box. And if someone likes our video, or, if someone likes our video, or um. <clears throat> um, hit that bell or something, and um, we can give it to them on it. I, I agree, Dave. I agree. Uh, let's see. I think Luke is a good guy. 
uh, I won't say we're best friends, but we're friendly to each other. And you know what? If Luke called me, say, bud, I'm, pull I'm on I-24, my tire's blown out, I would go help him out. And I think he'd do the same for me. Bateman Jr. did get a new pair of shoes, by the way. But, uh... I swear to I agree with Luke's point of view and where he's seen it. I agree with MLF and some of the other things. Um, but I think Luke has a good opinion. But uh, sometimes I think we always need to move on. And Luke would, I think Luke's got the ability and the, the way to reach the viewer and just start moving over on to some other topics. And I'm very guilty of the same things of beating a dead horse. Uh, but Luke is a very good interviewer too. Um, so... I have not uh, seen anything from rabid baits, but I have seen uh, people put feathers in their plastics, and uh, I've seen that one company, Tight Lines, all they do is put whiskers and stuff. I ain't, I mean, they're cool baits, uh, the Tight Lines UV stuff, but I I'm over the putting jig skirt material in ba baits. That's not doing anything for me. Ooh. Yeah, loot, I mean, Gerald is a good dude, and I knew about this deal two months ago, and I wasn't going to say anything. It's not my part. But, uh, what's up, Chloe? Chloe, that's her name. Chloe's the name of our cat, but yes, this is my son. This is Bakeman Jr. Uh, Hackney went to lose. Uh, Swindle went to lose. Um, but with Strike King, uh, or Strike King, but Strike King's parent company acquiring uh, lose. Uh, so they own Lou's, HS Strut, which is Hunter, or Hunter Specialties over in the, the hunting market, um, which is a huge company. So you got Strike King, Lou's, and HS. It's smart for them to want their anglers to, uh, in, in, you know, why would you want a guy like, let's just take uh, Hackney, for example. Why would you want him promoting Quantum and Quantum Reels um, when you own Str uh, Lou's and Strike King? But... I do know that Gerald's going to have a rod um, deal with a different company, and that's okay. You know, he has the G uh, Swindle Rods over there at Quantum. I don't know what he's doing now. Uh, Brian Latimer's with Lou's. I love Latimer. Latimer's a good dude, man. I really, I think, I wish that dude the best success. I hope he wins Bassmaster Classic. I know. And uh, I'm going to celebrate with him. He's a I good dude. I know why they don't make swim baits out of paper. Why don't they make swim baits out of paper, bro? I, I know why they don't. Why? Because when you put them in the water, they're, just, they're tear up. That's a great observation. We can't make baits out of paper. They tear yeah. up. Yeah, uh, Gerald Spore is a good dude. He's a good, he's a, he's a friend of mine. I like him. And you know what? Spore has the right to call Luke out. That's fine. They did handle it very professionally. Uh, Gerald has a great story how he come about fishing as well. So, yeah, we're matching. He's a lot. He's a lot better looking than I am, though. Hey, I'm not gonna lie. You're gonna see some loose stuff from me, hopefully. And uh, I'm not gonna say I'm going to switch completely to lose, but I'm gonna give them an honest shot. I know I've been kind of dog on them in the past, but man, after messing around with some of the new stuff of Mark Menendez, I'm pretty impressed. And uh, Again, uh, the guys that are over at Lose are the same guys at Strike King. They've always supported me. Uh, I've told them I'm working with Six Sense, and like, dude, you know that's great. Six Sense is a great company. We respect them. Uh, don't forget about us. But you know, I'm not gonna forget about against about my Strike King case. I use a lot of their stuff. So, who's the strongest bass fisherman? Um, hmm, that's a weird question. Man, I'm gonna go with uh, strongest bass fisherman. Hmm, I'm gonna go with Aaron Brett. Well, he's probably the scrappiest, uh, but strongest. I don't know, man. That's I always heard Jimmy Mize was one guy you didn't want to scrap with back in the day. Uh, well, Chloe Lose is a rod and reel company. Uh oh. Did y'all hear them cats? Daggum cats are fighting outside my house. B Lat went to Yamaha. You know, I've, I've, 
I like Yamaha outboards, but I'm kind of not cool with what they did to some of the uh, MLF anglers. Um, I think we better go check on Chloe. Go look for it. Go check on your cat. Okay. So we've got a neighbor's cat that keeps harassing ours. I'm not a big cat fan, but Brooks really likes his pet Chloe. Chloe. Kevin, was Halo and Netbait always the same company? No, they weren't. So American Bait Works is Halo, Chloe. Scumfrog, um, Netbait, Chloe. Snag Proof, and Freedom Tackle now. And it's all under one company. Kind of like Pure Fishing is like uh, Berkeley and Power Bait and Shakespeare and a few other. That's what American Tack or Bait Works is now. So. I hope to have uh, my buddy Justin Swore over there at Net Netbait um, here on on Bateman Raw. So if you guys guys got suggestions for who to be on Bateman Raw, you guys need to let me know. Guys, we only got about ten minutes, and that ball is going to drop. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me for. Almost dang gum two hours here. Either I'm the, I don't have any life, or there's just not a lot of good entertaining stuff out there. She just got attacked, but I think the black cat got attacked. You think Chloe attacked the black cat? Yeah, and she got. You think <laughs> Chloe whipped her? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, our, our, uh, that's Brooks Cat. Uh, let's see here. How about the guy who won Kentucky when he bullied other guys off the spot strongest? Oh, you're talking about uh, that du dude from up north? Um, God, what's his name? He's not relevant anymore. I think that's a, one of the luckier wins I've ever seen in my life. And if you knew some of the stuff I knew about that guy finding that spot, you would kind of be feel the way I did. I am not the coolest YouTuber out there. Dude, I love shower blows. That is a badass bait. How did I end up here? I was just trying to listen to Billy Elijah. I don't know, Joe Main Davis, but I'm glad you're here. Hit that sub button, man. It's 848 where I live a while before New Year starts. So I guess I'm getting people trying to see people streaming on New Year's and not, not know a lot about fishing. So, this is my channel. My name is Kevin, uh, this, and they call me the Bait Man, and I'm doing a live stream with all my great fishing family on YouTube. We've been talking about baits and professional fishermen. This is my son, Brooks. If you want, if you got somebody in your family that likes fishing, if you like to fish, hit the sub button. You'll see more cool content. And they call me the Bait Man Jr. And they call him the Bait Man Jr. Uh, I love Daiwa. I love Daiwa reels. I've got Daiwa rods. I have nothing bad to say about them. And I look forward to keep using some of their stuff. But I'm going to have to have a conversation with them. Man, I love your stuff. Guys are always asking, but you need to send me a couple new rods and reels every now and then. Do I own any fish? No, I don't. But I had an ex-girlfriend that smelt like one, if that counts. <clears throat> Hey, no problem, Ten Horse Monty. Yeah. Go to bed, buddy. Uh, we're going to stream again Saturday night, but I'm going to try to get some kind of video done between tonight and Saturday to kind of fill in that gap. Um, my go-to color in the Provoke is Ghost Bone Minnow or Jank Juice. Um, tip for you, Monty. If it's bright, use flashy colors. Uh, if it's overcast, your whites and chartreuse. Um. If I could get Matt or Tim to do Bateman Raw, uh, I'd love to. But, man, they're kind to, uh, I'll be honest, they're kind of hard to get a hold of. And and, and I get it. You know, they got they want to spend a lot of time with family. Cole's got to get hot. Favorite cold water crankbaits in 15 plus feet of water. Clear water, smallmouth lake. Golly, 15 plus feet of water. 6XD, man. 6XD or that Cloud 20. Uh, and use some 8-pound tests. On a Spro Rock Crawler. That's a really good one. Clearwater Smallmouth Lake. I have not seen the new Tatua 2020, but it's basically the Tatua Elite with the SV Spool, which I'm excited about, but I got to get some new stuff. Tim Evans, what do you think of the 316 fishing new swim jig? So let me answer this question. I'll let you go, Brooks. I thought it looked really good, to be honest with you. I'm not so sure about the 
treble hook, but I can see where it makes it more weedless. But, dude, for fishing out deep, maybe trying to fish with the same bass you're fishing with a spoon, it's different, man. It looks really, really good. But it's going to be like $400. So. I do watch Kicking Their Bass TV. I'll be honest, that dude's grown up quite a bit, and he's done really, really good. So I'm really excited to see uh, Noah's success uh, there on YouTube. On my last, let's see, Jake Lawrence and Brent Anderson on Bateman Raw. That is happening, Billy. Absolutely. Do I need a Walmart challenge the Bass TV? Yeah. You know what, though? I'll give, uh, and I mean this with nothing bad. I used to be, I don't want to say a hater, but the kick in the Bass TV, he didn't care about the haters. He kept doing everything he wanted to do, and he kept grinding and grinding and hustling. And, dude, he's doing it big. So, hats off to him, man. Um, favorite balsa flat side crankbait in water under 55 degrees. I'm going with a uh, probably a Rapala DT flat. That's a really, really good one. Or any of the PH Customs uh, flat side stuff or, or Zoom WC, something similar to that. No problems. Go ahead. Um, I bet we sh we can start calling Chloe the bait Chloe. No, the bait cat. <laughs> yeah. Mega Bass Sonic side is a really good one. It's just not balsa. Guys, we got five friggin' minutes. Somebody gave me this. Uh... To the ball, I guess. Somebody gave me a website for JDM tackle. I want y'all to go here to check out some stuff. Um, wait, is there a bog? Is the bog? This JDM Tackle Heaven, I just posted a great place to get stuff from outside. Best bargain place to buy a dog was Shimano Reels, eBay, or American Legacy Tackle. I'm not into jigging with Jordan. Uh, I think he kind of railed D. Almighty's jock strap to get where he's at. But he, put, like I said, I'm not going to, uh, he's just... He does a lot of cool stuff that's not really related that much to fishing, but obviously that cool stuff has a better niche than stuff I do. I mean, guys, I'm not going to get in a wetsuit and start diving for knives and iPods. That's not going to happen. But I might try to do some uh, magnet fishing. Are the Bass Mafia Clear 37s holding up for you? Heard mixed reviews on them. Just bought some of the great products. Well, i got about five in front of me, and I've had them since they very first came out. And they don't have any tears on it. I love the Bass Mafia bags. Um, but the Clear 3700s, I've got one, and I'm going to be honest, it was my fault. I cracked the snot out of it, and I put a bunch of tape behind it, but it's still holding up. But these 3700s I've had for three years now, every one of these, and they're all held up. But I dropped one, and the back cropped on it. And these, the plastic ones are just like the Plano style. They, they can break you if you're careless. But I, I put tape on it, and we're good. Thank you, Ron Depot. Happy New Year to you. What was the website where you can buy Shimano reels? Uh, you can go here. American Legacy Tackle. They do Shimano, Dial, you name it. We're going to find out if Plano Edge is worth the price. Uh, obviously, they have stepped up their game. i tell you the one I really want to try is the Groove Tackle stuff. Um, and I love Bass Mafia. They've been great to me. But I want to be able to give you guys honest answers. And if somebody's putting some stuff out there that's junk, it's gone. I do watch Monster Fish. Um, matter of fact, that's a one thing I watch on Hulu a lot. Edge jib box looks good, yeah. Dave, I agree with you. I think all those storage boxes are overpriced. Um, not just Bass Mafia. Now, this one's really cool. This Calcos box, boss, I would say you're probably getting your best bang for the buck. And I really need to load this guy up. But um, you can find some good sales on these boxes at Walmart.
Dan, I would definitely like to check it out. Um, now, God, look at this. This, this is this is called dad hair right here. If you're a guy like me, that's already got terminal boxes, I don't want to like go, want to go spend another twenty, thirty bucks when I've already got them on here. Uh, and I love the terminal box, and it does everything I need. Don G, no sir, this is just Dr Pepper. And shout out to my wife; she made an amazing dinner tonight. I'll see if I, I, I don't like taking food pics because, well, it's kind of redneck. But my wife made this uh, casserole here. Ah, it's it's a pasta casserole, and it is like a sauce sauce sausage rigatini or something like that. Oh yeah, she's getting brownie points for that. She did good. So. Dude, Mateo's for two ninety nine is a steal. That's it. James Baked Zatini is great. But I have lost in a year and a half like sixty pounds. So if y'all watch the old Bateman videos back when I was at the store, I weighed like two hundred and ten pounds, two hundred and twenty pounds. I weigh like one sixty one right now. And I'm pretty proud of that. Uh I had some kind of good i had some boobage going back in the day and i've kind of slimmed down now to a cup but you know shit happens when you get older too so plans for 2020 be a good dad be a good husband um be a good uh christian as best i can um make people happy help people catch fish and catch a few janks very simple dad husband christian um have make people happy catch change flats out i quit eating dog crap all right one minute and it's gonna be a new year i don't even know how the ball is dropping um maybe i can find out real quick but we are fixing to get a we are fixing to be into 2000 in 20. Happy New Year, everybody. It's 2020. Whew. Thanks for being on the stream with me tonight. Oh, man. It is officially midnight on the East Coast, 11 o'clock Central Time here. Happy New Year, guys. Thank you so much for joining me for two hours marathon stream. So, I got to get Bateman Jr. to bed. I'm going to jump off here. Guys, thank you so much. Um, I really enjoyed 2019. 2020 is going to be any better. Happy New Year, Brett Thompson. Good to see you on here, buddy. And, um, yeah. Be back Saturday night. We're actually going to pick a topic. I'm going to find th something to talk about. Let's just go ahead and dive right into the best baits for the pre-spawn. We're going to talk about lipless crankbaits, regular crankbaits, your soft plastics, Jerk baits, swim baits, the best baits, and we're going to discuss them in the detail because um, it's getting that time. And I might pull up the Google Maps Navionics to show you guys some stuff. So thank you guys uh, so much for joining in this stream tonight. Make sure you check out Six Cents Fishing. Use the discount Baitman for ten percent off. Grab the Super Six uh, box and save ten dollars. Use the code Baitman Super Six. And uh, I gotta get off here and make a thumbnail. Last stream, it's over. Thank you guys so much, and and thank you guys uh, for always being supportive of Bateman Jr. Go be with your families. Be safe tonight. I will see you in 2020.